everybody, it's me, Hetty, and what are we making today? You guessed it. Uh, maybe the title gave it away. Honey bun cake. Honey bun cake. Oh, yeah. Toasty, if you're watching. Pate. <laughs> I just had to do it. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go over the ingredients with you. This is super simple. Uh, I make a lot of stuff from scratch and sometimes I don't and this is just one of those good cakes uh, I, I learned how to make a while back. I don't know how long it's been now uh, My kids were still fairly small when I started making it, but that doesn't mean it was new uh, It just means that that's when I started making it. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna show you it starts out with one of these Super moist cake mix super boys I guess it can't be just regular cake mix yellow it's got to be super moist okay so make sure you if you if possible get super moist okay now the other thing we've got I'm gonna go down this list and if I can grab it on the table pretty conveniently I'm gonna do that all right here goes First of all, the yellow cake mix, I've already obviously got it in the bowl. Two-thirds cup just vegetable oil under any circumstances. Do not substitute olive oil for baking. Yeah, does not come out right. Ask me how I know. As a teenager, I discovered that, so yes. Okay, four eggs, as you can see over here. One cup sour cream. And this is the last of a batch of my creme fraiche. You know it. You know it. So I'm going to use it. But store bought's just fine. I just need to use this up anyway, so it, in it goes. One cup packed brown sugar. And you also know I make my own brown sugar, but guess what? I didn't make this. Somebody did, but it wasn't me. I've got a third of a cup of chopped pecans, and look, this, I'm going to not lie to you, this a little over a third of a cup, but we like pecans. I didn't want to overkill it, but it's just right. Two teaspoons of cinnamon, which you can see here, and after we mix the cake up for the filling part, well, no, this is for the icing part, you're going to need, this is, I sifted it, you don't have to, I sifted uh, this is one cup of powdered sugar. Uh, I guess some of y'all call it icing sugar, stuff like that. We call it, I just call it powdered sugar, I guess. I don't have the milk out right now because I'm just leaving it in the fridge because I don't need it right now. But we're going to need up to a quarter cup of milk. Not exactly a quarter cup of milk. It just depends on, you know, the consistency to get where I need to get. And this is one teaspoon. This is precious now. Y'all know this is part of that last, that jar I showed you when I made the extract. Speaking of, if I can remember, I don't think I have it right here. But, oh, but I do. Here, hold on. Look at that. Look at that color. Are you remembering to shake yours every day? Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. All right, I got the cake mix in here. And let me get, I'm going to crack my eggs, but guess what? Y'all know how I am. Y'all are not going to sit here and watch me crack every single egg painfully, painfully. Here, you want me to do that again? Every... <laughs> every single I'm just teasing you okay I'll bring you right back okay all righty uh, going back to it look I just beat these a little bit I just busted the yolks up a little bit just to help it along a little bit no big deal we're not making a cream omelet French cream omelet or anything so that'll work better let me get that off camera and now here's our oil and that was two-thirds cup Now, with that, oh wait, forgot, whoops, great, live TV, not live, oh, I forgot to snap them, <laughs> so 
sorry about that. Back to the overhead shot. All right, the only other thing I need to put in is sour cream. If you're splitting hairs, creme fish. All right, it's been on low. It says to hit it up now and mix for two minutes. So when I bring, I'll bring you back in two minutes. Okay, in two minutes. Looks rather mixed well to me. All right. stand up not make a mess okay for a moment we're gonna set this to the side okay um, I changed the set around and we've got some a couple of other little things to do and here we go I've got oh wrong shot <laughs> this is that cup of brown sugar and to that I'm adding in the cinnamon. Give that a little stir. I'll finish this up off camera. I'm just giving you an idea. In go the pecans. I'm reserving just a few of the pecans. And I'm going to mix that. In this cake pan, I have uh, I this looks like it's a 9 by 13. Uh, I can verify that. But anyway, I just sprayed it with cooking spray. If you want to flour, butter and flour yours, or however you do, you can. I have had zero trouble using just cooking spray. All right, now, as you can see, that's all nice and mixed up. And what we do is, I want to show you, this is a thick batter. It's a thick batter, okay? So what I try to imagine is, I'm not going to take this out and measure it with a cup, you know. So, uh, as you can see, it's fairly thick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make an imaginary line right here. So, half goes in the bottom. Because you don't want to accidentally put, you know, two-thirds of your cake down. And then, as a matter of fact, I'm going to probably even try to go with a little bit less. Because I have made these cakes before. Let me get that out of my way. I'm just going to spread down a little bit. I am going to add more as we go, but I'm just trying to be sure I actually have half of the cake in reserve. I'm going to be a messy with this, aren't I? Y'all know I can make a mess. How many times have I chose all that over the years? All right. Now, it's all going to bake together. So, while this isn't perfect, in my estimation, this is approximately half of the batter. I would rather have more on the top layer than the bottom, and you will see why. This is a lot of mixture, and remember, you've got to pour the cake over it. And I'll tell you something else I do. Hold on, I'm just going to use a little scoop I've got. Give me a little more sprinkle control. All right. Now look. In the beginning, I try, well, I went right off and went to the edge. I try not to go all the way to the edge. You don't have to be perfect with this. I mean, just dump it in there. If you mix it all up, you could take a butter knife and just mix it up. And it, guess what? It'd still be good. So, anyway. Because it seems like it's awful. In the beginning, you think, wow, this is just too much mix for the center of the cake. But you definitely want that other layer to go on there. Alright. So, now it looks like I didn't go all the way to the edge, but I'm going to come back in here and just go like this. I'm not pressing real hard. I'm just kind of pushing the loose over toward the edge. Okay? That's what I wanted to show you. I bet you thought I was going to tell you, oh, don't go to the edge. We need it to seal up. No, we don't need to seal up. It's sugar, for goodness sake. It's going to melt in the oven anyway. And like I said, this could be the ugliest thing on earth, and it'd be every bit of really good stuff. All right, I do have 
I'll show you what I do. Sometimes I've got not even, oh my gosh, less than a quarter of a cup left. As a matter of fact, I'm going to come in and I'm going to sprinkle right along the edge here. And I know I definitely, I might only have about a tablespoon and a half left. And I'll show you what I do before I put the cake in. All right. So now we can, you want to kind of just make sure you're running your bowl around. That's why I picked this bowl so it's not so heavy. Don't get you one of those big heavy dough bowls to make this. Or get a big heavy dough bowl and do it how you do it. <laughs> I like to use the lighter bowls when I'm having to go, you know, hold it over another pan and put it in. Just makes it lighter for me. Somehow. Now, a question was I ever really strong? I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I think I would have told you I was. But honestly, after being sick, when I first got sick, not quite three years ago now, almost. And I am feeling much better, by the way. I'm not where I need to be, but got a couple of issues going on, but we're not talking about that. All right, then, as you can see, you need to kind of just carefully try to just go. This is where you do want to try to go over toward the edge. It is, it might take you several times. And again, like I said, if you took a butter knife, if you get PO'd, Look, take a butter knife, make you one of those swirl cakes. Just take your knife and run it through. It'll be just as good. I'm trying to show you all what the recipe says to do, but sometimes I end up having to do stuff, as my husband says, heady style. <laughs> so I don't know where you come up with all that stuff. Anyway. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to smear this out. We'll come back when I get it done. Be right back. Okay. As you can see, it's been like 30 seconds since I just left you, but I just think it's a waste of videotape to watch me have to press it in every corner. This is what I do. I don't know if anybody else does this. I come back in with that last. This is a sprinkle. It's not heavy at all. In fact, there's only about another teaspoon in here. And I just kind of evenly sprinkle it over the top. And that's how I do it. All right. In the oven. Forgive me. I hope you preheated your oven to 350. <laughs> I'm just going to continue to forget that. And for my European friends, that would be, I believe it's about 176, 177 Celsius. Okay. Uh, my bad. I forgot to tell you. Preheat your oven. So, always remember to preheat your oven. And as usual, everything will be down below. Like it always is. Alright, it's going in the oven. 44 to 48 minutes. Depends on your oven. Some ovens are fast. I'd be checking. I'd probably be checking after about 40, 41 minutes, personally. And remember, when you run a toothpick in it, or a little skinny skewer, and it comes out clean, it's done. Also, that goes the same for butter knife. Just run it through the center. And if that butter knife comes out clean, it's done as well. It, for those folks who don't have any skewers or toothpicks. All right. We'll be back when it's, well, it'll still be hot, but not hot and, quote, bubbly. <laughs> All right. I will see you in a moment. Well, you know, 40-ish minutes, give or take. That's when. Okay, we're coming to the next step. We're going to mix this glaze up. And the, the cake still has about 10 minutes. But I'm going to go ahead and mix this up now. And then we'll let the cake warm probably. It, not, not like you would a cake that you're going to, you know, ice completely like a two-layer cake or anything like that. It's going to stay in the pan, but I'm going to let it get warm. Maybe I'll let it rest in between 10, 14 minutes, something like that. No more. And then we're going to make this glaze and drizzle the glaze over it. All right, this is pretty simple. I've got one cup of powdered sugar. This is just basic glaze. And I've got a quarter of a cup of milk, but I may or may not use all of it. It just depends. Sometimes I even use a little more. It just all depends on how it goes. And I'm going to throw in the 
vanilla. That was that one teaspoon of vanilla. I believe I showed that at the beginning. Then I just start. You don't need any special apparatus. Just an old tablespoon would be fine. Eating, eating spoon. Soup spoon, rather. That's what I like to use. Alright, now see that's still really thick. And I, I barely, I don't know if you can tell, I've only used just a little bit. And you don't want to just dump it all in there. You don't want it too runny. Because depending on how your weather was that day can affect that thickness as far as the amounts of milk that you add. That's why you pour it out as if you're going to need the whole thing. But then just go back in. And as you can see, real time, I am keeping you for this because I want to teach people that don't know if you've been making cakes for years, you already know about this. You don't even need this part, probably. But then you have some people, they've never done this before. Just a simple little cake glaze. You would even use, uh, you could even use something like this for the top of a bunt cake or anything like that, you know. All right. That's coming together pretty good. You get the idea, but I'm probably going to use the rest of this milk, so I'll come back because I'm still just stirring. I'll come right back. Okay, I got it mixed. I actually added all of the milk, and I added not even maybe half a teaspoon more, just a couple of drips. And that's how it goes when you're making something like this. Remember, you're not, you want it to be the consistency of this watch for the y'all that don't know if you know this isn't for you this is for the ones that don't know and that's the consistency that you want this and uh excuse me i got thirsty this is my bottle of water <laughs> move out of the way hey the cake's done uh i actually took mine out at about a little bit less than 43 minutes maybe 42 and a half minutes something like that not exact but uh, it's perfectly done. And now I'm going to show you what I was talking about. Um, guess what? I can't find any of my, uh, speaking of toothpicks, I usually have them on hand, but they must fall behind some spices or something. But anyway, look here. I'm going to show you. And again, folks, if y'all know how to make a cake, this is not for you. This is for somebody that maybe didn't have anybody teaching them how to cook growing up. So they don't know that stuff, all right? Now look. I got these. I got these at, uh, I don't know, probably Kroger or Publix, probably. Pub, 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 if I can speak, Publix, maybe. But I had these little mini skewers. And you just go in. Look. Go in, right smack dab in the middle. And I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. Clean as a whistle. Now, what if you don't have either? Remember what I told you about just a regular old butter knife? Look, I'm going in the center. I'm going to pull it up, and I want to show you. Clean. No liquid. There's not a smear, smear. There's not a smear. Clean as it can be. Okay? Anyway, I just wanted to show you all that. The cake still got to cool down, and uh, I've still got this beautiful glaze here, okay? But it's still way too hot for that. So, anyway, I'll bring you back when it's time to pour that glaze on there. See you in a minute. Okay, everybody, this cake is still uh, very warm to the touch, but, you know, I can't put my hand on it for a minute. Uh, it's cooled down enough for me to pour this glaze over the top and spread it around. And the recipe always calls for, and I remember this, even though I hadn't made this for a while, but it calls for it to cool down for an hour before cutting. Now, also, I don't do it, but it also says you can go on and take a fork and prick holes in it and stuff. I've never found the need to do that. Uh, if you want to do it, you can, or you can use a skewer, just like I showed you a minute ago, or just carefully take a butter knife and stab it. Yes, stab it. All right, wasn't that easy? Now, we're going to let it cool. You know I will uh, 
share with you a picture of what it looked like because I'm not, <laughs> I always say I'm not going to sit around with video for an hour before I even cut into it or anything. So I will give you a picture and uh, we'll go from there. I know one thing. I know you cannot go wrong with this cake. It's good. If you need to take it to something, a potluck or something like that, and you got to sign the dessert and you're like, I don't know how to go. Oh my gosh. This is so easy. You can do it. I got y'all back. All right. Or as uh, one of my guys, uh, I love to watch homesteading, a uh, giggly girl and their, their son. Uh, I love to watch homesteading off the grill, uh, uh, off the grid. Yeah. Homesteading off the grid. And he always, he's ex-military, he'll say, he'll say, y'all got my six. <laughs> you know, so, anyway, uh, I appreciate you watching, and I would like for you to hit subscribe. And then I would also like to see you hit like. I don't know where that's going to be this time. And the bell wherever it's going to be ring it ring the bell and that way you would get notified when i upload a video but you don't have to ring the bell just check in every so often i probably have something you like okay i will see you again in the next video thank y'all so much for really sticking with me i appreciate that and all my new subscribers uh, I really do enjoy making these videos for y'all, and I do hope you'll stick with me in the future because I love cooking for y'all, okay? I sincerely mean that. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.